Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today I am going to explain a very recent paper from Facebook AI called wave to vec 2.0. So you might have heard about uh, this paper called uh, wave to vec uh, which was released around uh, I think six uh, six seven months ago uh, from same same team from Facebook uh, uh, and uh, they use something called uh, self-supervised uh, learning using something called contrast predictive coding to do uh, self-supervised speech recognition and uh, I have a tutorial also of that uh, paper in my YouTube channel you can check that and uh, recently they released this uh, wave to work 2.0 uh, which is basically uh, same framework with uh, more uh, features uh, uh, using the same self supervision uh, self supervised uh, learning uh, to learn some speech representations which are very much helpful for doing uh, speech recognition and uh, the authors are Alex uh, Bewski, uh, Henry Zo, uh, Abdul Rahman Muhammad and Michael Ali. So many people may be knowing about uh, Abdul Rahman Muhammad he is uh, one of the uh, key uh, founder of uh, uh, using deep learning for speech recognition like one of his uh, 2009 first paper which used uh, deep neural network for phoneme recognition task uh, for timid and they showed this huge boost up in accuracy uh, back in 2009 and this was the I think the first breakthrough of deep learning in speech uh, even though people say uh, it happened in 2011 and so on uh, but anyway so he is one of the key member of uh, that uh, the key member uh, key member in proving how to use deep neural networks for speech recognition and uh, he was a student of Jeffrey Hinton as well and uh, coming to the tutorial so we have uh, first we'll show the introduction we'll explain uh, what is the idea of this paper uh, and then we will see the model which is this wave uh, to vec model uh, to learn the representations of the speech uh, then we will see some training uh, uh, training uh, techniques they are using in this paper some of the experiments and results and sorry about this we don't have a code here they have not released the code yet i think um, they will release it soon in uh, fairs uh, in uh, fair to seek uh, library i think so uh, uh, so in the introduction, uh, so uh, so basically the idea is uh, to learn uh, representations uh, from audio without using any uh, labeled data. Like for example, let's say you have just raw audio waveforms, hours and like thousands of hours of audio data, and how can we leverage this unlabeled unlabeled data to learn some uh, good representations, which can be useful for. Uh, uh, speech recognition task and maybe who knows they can be useful for some of these uh, downstream tasks like emotion and recognition and maybe speaker identifications and so on uh, but the idea in this paper is to use these uh, representations speech representations they learn for uh, speech recognition and highly uh, low resource uh, speech recognition basically like using how can we do speech recognition for using just one hour of or 10 minutes of unlabeled uh, speech data uh, with these representations right and uh, this uh, wave to framework the 2.0 framework uses uh, masks in the input speech basically just like the transformer uh, they mask out some of the, the some of the uh, frames in the audio uh, in the latent space and latent space not in the input space uh, and uh, tr they try to uh, predict those uh, masked latent uh, vectors and they uh, once the prediction is done they compute this contrastive loss uh, 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 contrastive loss on top of those uh, latent vectors uh, to uh, learn uh, this uh, to train the model basically and these latent representations are not continuous representations they are uh, quantized representations uh, basically they think this quantized representation uh, uh, the co basically the because the speech uh, uh, phonemes are discrete labels uh, so this quantized representations also must be discrete that's how they think but previous works have also used uh, this latent representation which are in continuous space so but in this case they use this quantized representations basically the dis discrete latent representations right uh, uh, and uh, and uh, the they use these uh, quantized representations to learn uh, the model the train the model the, the I, I will explain how what is the model and so on uh, that is the idea of this self supervision task like using contrastive loss uh, along with a few other losses as well but we will get to that but mainly the contrastive loss uh, to 
uh, predict the uh, uh, masked masked uh, uh, frames. Uh, this also looks similar to contrastive predictive coding, which uh, which uh, uh, Aaron uh, van der Roode uh, proposed for uh, learning uh, self uh, for learning speech representations with self supervision a uh, uh, few years back, uh, which is called VQVAE. Um, so uh, that was not exactly specifically uh, proposed for speech. It was kind of proposed for many other tasks like reinforcement learning image and audio as well. Uh, and many people have built uh, algorithms on top of the CPC basically to predict uh, the future frames and uh, using contrastive uh, predictive coding basically. And there are various other uh, papers also. But in this case, they are again using this contrastive loss uh, to train the model. Uh, then once the pre-trained model is done, so basically once you train your self-supervised uh, or unsupervised, you can say unsupervised model, you can use that pre-trained model and fine-tune um, uh, your uh, fine-tune it uh, on your label data to do uh, whatever task you want. In this case, speech recognition. So basically, you take the pre-trained model, then you stick uh, stick some layers which are randomly inserted on top of each other and ask them to predict the phonemes or or like maybe uh, graphemes in in case of CTC, for example, right? So that is uh, that's how you train the speech recognition. So so that is that is the idea in this paper. And uh, the interesting, very interesting thing in this paper is with just ten minutes of label data. And uh, using the pre-trained uh, model, which was trained on 50,000 hours of unlabeled data, you can achieve 5.7% uh, uh, of word error rate, which is like great. And uh, that is why this paper became uh, famous recently and then uh, it came out in news and all. So, um, so if you just check for wave to wave 2.0, you will see some of these articles which uh, media is publishing. So uh, let's look into uh, the details of the model, uh, what is happening, what is the loss function, how they are training experiments and so on. So in this section, we'll just first explain the overall model architecture first. Then we will see uh, the encoder part. So basically this is uh, something which just takes the raw audio and encodes into some higher level representation. Then uh, 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 we will see uh, something called contextual representations with transformer. So basically, whatever feature extraction we do in the initial stage from raw audio, which will uh, it will go through some transformer network to learn the contextual representation. So basically, uh, think of this as some sort of an LSTM, which is learning the left and right context, right? Some something same thing similar to the transformer, how people use it. And uh, finally, we'll see one very interesting thing called the quantization module, which is basically uh, which basically converts the continuous representations into quantized representations. So, uh, and we will see uh, uh, how the uh, we will see something called Gumbel softmax trick or Gumbel uh, param reparameterization trick, which people uh, use heavily in discrete latent variable models. And uh, this paper also uses the same trick to uh, to uh, uh, train the model end to end so that uh, because usually the quantizations will be uh, will be uh, the uh, uh, which are not differentiable operation. Basically, you're using argmax or argmin, something like that, and those are not differentiable operations. And you have to you have to use something uh, to take care of those those problems. So, and in this paper, they are using Gumbel softmax. Uh, Gumbel or Gumbel reparameterization trick. So uh, we will see this, that in the detail. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, that is that's the idea one of the idea in this paper so uh, the architecture is like this so basically you take the raw audio just like this uh, just the raw audio don't take any features or anything just take the raw audio as uh, just like that uh, audio waveform just read it from the audio wave file uh, you will get a sequence of numbers which are 1d then you use uh, CNN uh, 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 with uh, let's say some some number of layers like maybe seven layers uh, of CNN now and learn uh, 1D CNN because this is the input is 1D so we learn the representation Z so the Z basically is basically you can say capital Z is uh, Z1 uh, Z2 and so on and ZT for, for example capital uh, so these are the like sequence of vectors you will get and these vectors are continuous vectors right then you uh, do something called quantization. So the quantization, basically, I will tell you how to how that quantization is done. So basically, the quantization tells you, uh, it says, okay, this z is a continuous vector. I'm going to replace it with some other vector uh, c, or let's call it as q. 
q1 uh, q2 so on qt and these are some entries in some code book right so code book is basically uh, think of code book as some sort of a dictionary and you are just taking this z and trying to match this z with all the available uh, code book vectors whichever is closer will go and replace this z with this q right? like maybe one of these entries is q right so this is a standard code book uh, quantization operation like may you may be already knowing it uh, we will see uh, some of this uh, improved version of this but in the coming slide but that is the idea of quantization so once you get this quantized vectors here let, let's say q1 q2 and so on uh, q capital t so what they are going to do is they are going to learn uh, they are going to use a transformer to learn the contextual representations just like the transformer people use in uh, nlp so there are these uh, multiple layers of self attention uh, blocks so the self attention layers basically uh, as you know they just try to attend given this input they try to attend over uh, the other uh, vectors so so the standard uh, transformer architecture many people will be knowing if you don't know just go and uh, watch uh, one of my tutorial called all you need is attention you will understand it and this transformer basically is not straightforward they use this masking so masking is basically you just mask out some of these vectors basically you just make them zeros for example right and then the idea is to predict these masked vectors um, from the output of this transformer so basically this transformer is a kind of a neural network which takes some input uh, and it has some self attention layers inside and whatever input you gave uh, you can you, you will get the same output length basically like for example if you have t frames t frames in the input you get the same t frames but since you have masked some of these frames the idea is to predict that masked uh, quantized vector so q basically so let's say you have masked out qi you have to m predict this qi right and once you predict it you have to i mean to predict it you have to train the model right so the once you i mean the training in the sense you have to make sure the model predicts whatever masking you have done properly and to learn this architecture you have to use some loss function so the simple way is just use a l2 loss function just try to reconstruct whatever input is there in the output so that is a very simple way but that is not very efficient so people used uh, this contrastive loss basically the contrastive loss says uh, basically it says it's kind of a triplet loss so you want to make this q uh, qi sorry qi prediction uh, qi uh, let's say cap as close as qi and in the same time you also wants to you also want to push away all qj which are not qi like uh, does not include i all qj uh, uh, far away from this qi right so basically some something like triplet loss so you can think of think of it in that way uh, that's how that's how it works so that's the contrast loss. so basically contrast is uh, i mean the word itself says like you want to contrast between the actual input and others right so that's that's the contrast we will we'll understand the equations and so on in the coming slide but that is the idea of this uh, contrast loss right so once you do that so once you let's say you learn or train the model using contrast loss plus some other losses we'll explain you uh, something called diversity loss and l2 loss and so on but main loss is contrast loss once you train the model so the model should be able to learn uh, learn to uh, have some very good speech representations uh, which can be very much useful for uh, uh, later speech recognition task and you can also think of these quantized representations you are predicting right so these could be some sort of a uh, phonemes you can think of it that way so they, they i don't think so they have done any experiment to show it is a phoneme but uh, you can assume this way those are like very good representations like phonemes are the very good representations for doing speech recognition right so in that way right so this is the idea of the architecture now uh, we'll understand the blocks each block of uh, this architecture so basically so uh, uh, basically in the feature encoder you have some convolution temporal convolution 1d convolutions uh, with uh, gaussian excited linear unit activation function uh, pretty standard convolution neural network so uh, you uh, you take the rod you apply 1d cnn uh, and then you get some vectors with whatever number of filters and so on then you keep uh, pushing those uh, inputs to the next convolutions layer convolutions and so on right and uh, as i said we use the raw audio i mean not me i mean the paper uses raw audio the uh, raw audio as the input to the model and they apply la layer normalization after uh, for every channel uh, every every output of output channel 
and uh, as I said, uh, they use the transformer in the I, I showed you in the model. Uh, they use the transformer architecture to learn the contextual representations, uh, which which just takes the input from the feature encoder as simple as that. And they also use uh, something called relative positional embeddings, not the normal positional encoding. Uh, so, 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 uh, so the next important and very interesting thing is this quantization module. So all those uh, transformers, I mean uh, convolutions, uh, all those things you may already know about it. This is uh, this quantization with uh, using some uh, we along with uh, uh, Gumbel uh, Gumbel softmax uh, softmax trick. You may not know about it much. So the reason is, I mean, Gumbel softmax uh, trick is mostly used in the discrete latent variable models. Like for example, let's say you are using uh, variational autoencoders. Uh, variational autoencoders for a text for example right uh, text is a discrete uh, data because this contains simple sequence of symbols like the words and uh, variational autoencoder for that case you can't directly use the normal variational autoencoder which has this uh, encoder and uh, decoder form and it takes the sample or uh, draws uh, z's from continuous uh, continuous space continuous latent space uh, but uh, in case of text, you have the latent, which are, which are latent variables which are discrete. So you need a discrete, uh, discrete uh, latent variable model. So for that, they use uh, Gumbel uh, reparameterization trick, unlike the normal uh, reparameterization trick, pe uh, trick people use in the normal VAs. So we'll understand the Gumbel uh, softmax trick in the coming slide, very detailed. Uh, but how how are we going to? I mean, what is the idea of this uh, Gumbel softmax here? So, so basically what we are doing in quantization is we are discretizing uh, the encoder output Z uh, to get Q. So basically Z is basically you can think of as Z1, uh, Z2 and so on, ZT. This every Z is a continuous vector. So basically it's a vector of some dimension and uh, it has continuous values, right? And Q is basically quantized version of, uh, quantized version of these Z's. So how are you going to get Q? So basically, you have to just, you will have some sort of a code books, right? So the code book looks like this. So code book is basically uh, some sort of a dictionary. So we have a, uh, V entries, for example, let's say you have V entries, one, two, uh, so on and capital V. What you do is you take Z, find, uh, for example, distance between all these uh, vectors V1, V2 and so on. Uh, let's say V uh, capital V or we can we can as well call them as Q. So Q1, Q2 and QV. You find uh, difference or you find the distance between this Z and all the entries here. And you all you find the arg min, for example, arg min of uh, Q uh, I minus uh, Z1, for example, for the first vector, right? Uh, for all uh, I. Now, uh, whichever gives you the closest loss, uh, whichever gives you the very uh, tiny uh, distance, you replace that Z by this Q. This is the idea of uh, quantization, right? Learning from, I mean, choosing the quantized representation from code book. I mean, learning code book is different, but let's say you have the code book already and this is how you should choose it. And in this paper, they don't use a single uh, code book. They use multiple code book. Uh, let's say there are capital G number of code books. Uh, what you do is you get the representation from all of these code books, uh, let's say G1, G2, and so on, G capital G, and uh, you just concatenate all the vectors and uh, you get the final vector, right? Uh, which is Q, right? This is how you get the uh, final, uh, I mean, I, mean the, I gave you an example of single code book, but in this paper, they use multiple code book. That's the whole idea. Now, uh, as you just saw previously, so uh, using, uh, I mean, I mean this, this, uh, the quantization requires some of these uh, operations like argmax and argmin and so on, right? What are they? So basically, they are uh, non-differentiable operations. So when I say non-differentiable, you can't differentiate them. So if you can't differentiate them, we can't train the neural network, right? So that's going to be problematic. So what can we do? Uh, the paper, the old paper, VQVAE paper, if you see, uh, they just use one trick, simple trick. So that during training, I mean, during forward pass, they use the quantization, but during backward pass, because that's when you do differentiation, right? They don't, they just cut off uh, the uh, the quantization part. They just directly bypass it, right? And that was the trick they used. 
so and it worked so in the same same case same case they could have uh, i mean they uh, that, that that's a one trick people used and there are various other techniques people uh, people can use like straight through estimator and there is uh, something called reinforce so there are many ways of uh, many ways to use uh, neural network when you have discrete operations but gumbel uh, softmax is the one which uh, which is very famous recently and uh, uh, kind of very interesting as well so so let's see the problem so what so uh, i mean let's understand what is this uh, this this slide is all, all about uh, gumbel uh, uh, trick or gumbel softmax trick and uh, i took some of these uh, interesting equations from uh, uh, arth arthosolebo so one of the russian uh, uh, researcher who gave a talk on this uh, discrete latent variable models uh, so uh, so let's say you have a problem where you want to draw samples from a categorical distribution which is a discrete distributions with these logits right pi 1 pi 2 and pi k right so standard way, standard thing you can think of as uh, let's say you have a neural network to predict uh, the words uh, words in the vocabulary for example let's say you want to predict some words uh, given some input you want to predict uh, next word for example and predicting word is nothing but choosing a probability i mean predicting probability distribution over uh, vocabulary right let's say if you have v capital v number of words you have to predict uh, distribution over all these v so one two capital v right and uh, you have to then take the arg max of this and get that particular word index in the same way let's say you have this categorical distribution and you want to sample from it one simple way is just find the arg max right or uh, arg max so arg max basically says okay fine um, i can directly sample from this distribution whichever gives you the highest value but arg max as i said is a is a discrete operation so uh, sorry it's a non differentiable operation now what we can do is we can find we can say this z i mean getting this uh, z from categorical distribution is as similar to uh getting arg min from another continuous distribution which is an exponential distribution uh, uh uh i don't know what this symbol is called uh, uh this let's call it as e right uh, k uh, uh, uh so so this e e k for example right so uh, uh so this this uh, arg min of the e k divided by pi k will give you the uh, distribution z sorry the sample z now uh so now now uh, this this if we uh, write it in terms of uh, like if you apply a log and uh, if i mean if we can we can expand it and uh, we can we will get in this format so log uh, pi k minus log ek and let's call it as uh, gamma right so now sampling ek from exponential this ek uh, is an exponential distribution as we know so we saw it here right and log pi k is basically the pi k is basically the logits and again here we have this arg max right so you can replace this arg max by a soft max right and this soft max basically uh, is a you can think of it as a soft version of this arg max where arg max is not differentiable but soft max is differentiable and uh, you know the equation of soft max uh, along with when you have a temperature term uh, soft max with the temperature term you can write it in this form right tau is this temperature term right so basically it says if tau is equal to 0 you will get the exact uh, exact uh, arg max i mean you will get the exact arg max but when tau is equal to infinity you will get the uniform distribution uh, uh, but if it is in between you will get some sort of a in between thing right so that is the idea of the soft max now you can write uh, z, uh, z uh, which has uh, some gamma and some pi logits uh, as this right soft max of log pi 1 plus some uh, gamma 1 gamma 2 and so on so this is gamma 1 gamma 2 those are called gumbel uh, noise sorry gumbel noise and do these are sampled from uh, gumbel distribution and the how do you i mean but but the question is like how do we get this gumbel distribution so the gumbel distribution construction is very easy so gumbel distribution for the kth uh, uh, variable is basically minus log of minus log of uk and this uk is basically a sample drawn from a uniform distribution as simple as that right so this is how uh, gumbel's uh, trick work but everything if you look at this everything is differentiable right so everything is differentiable including this term so so you can, you can easily use this instead of uh, 
uh, using argmax right so argmin for example maybe right so so w the interesting thing you can see here like this is one of the slide from the actual paper the gumbel uh, uh, paper gumbel uh, softmax paper the 2015 paper i guess uh, so the let's say you have a categorical distribution like this right and you want to draw a sample from this so drawing sample means getting this uh, this particular index right so because this is the highest probability uh, so how do you do, uh, how can we do that if you use this technique and if you keep temperature 0 0.1 and if you vary this temperature to let's say th like this you will actually with 0 0.1 temperature and if you use this trick you will get exact like this which is which is what we want right and if you increase the temperature you will get uh, you will get a uh, uniform distribution close to uniform distribution right so uh, and if in between you will get uh, some other uh, probability values as well right so uh, this is the idea of uh, gumbel uh, trick now how are we going to use this gumbel softmax trick in this so let's say we have g code books uh, basically g is basically the groups so let's say you have 10 groups and each group has v entries so basically you have 10 code books and uh, each code book has uh, v data points or v vectors right and uh, each vector uh, has a uh, as is a each vector is you can think of as a, uh, a vector of dimension uh, v uh, cross d divided by g so d divided by g why they say is because uh, you can they could have simply said uh, something like uh, some small uh, something like n or something and n uh, d is equal to n times g something like that but just to make sure uh, one, when, once we get this final uh, final vector z uh, so final uh, uh, the final vector uh, z uh, z which is of dimension d right so if you, if it has to be dimension d that means you have to get uh, uh, d by g entry from every uh, code book so every code book right so because you are concatenating vectors from all the code books g code books right so once you get this should be of dimension d and then we then what they are doing is they are applying some linear transformation to transform this d into f right right and then so uh, so as i said so gumbel softmax uh, you need uh, to get to make everything uh, differentiable i mean from end to end right uh, because the code books are discrete you choosing code book is also a discrete operation right and uh, so uh, so however uh, so there is this one important thing here like the, we saw some equation right in the previous step so which is a softmax of uh, i think if you remember it's a, a, a softmax uh, softmax x equal to e power uh, xj divided by tau divided by some v equal to 1 to v e power x uh, v divided by tau right this is the equation you saw and same thing it trans translates here so this x here is basically l uh, g comma v and this l g comma v is basically a logit function logit which we used in the previous uh, slide and nv is basically the gumbel noise and this uh, gumbel noise is basically drawn from uh, gumbel distribution of 0 comma 1 and this is basically uh, you obtain it through uh, minus log of uh, minus log uh, u u uh, v and this uv is drawn from a uniform distribution of 0 comma 1 right as simple as that the, so this is basically uh, you are choosing uh, z uh, uh, from uh, this uh, l which is basically the logits map uh, which is uh, which is dis I mean basically basically the idea is like you have all these code books and which vector should i choose you have to answer that question right and choosing it is nothing but just like you, just like how we drawn a sample from the distribution categorical distribution you can think of this l as some sort of a distribution right which is of dimension uh, g cross v because you have g code books and v vectors for each code book and you want to pick the one code book vector which is uh, which we are going to map it to z as simple as that and choose and this code book is basically has a distribution basically it is some sort of a 2d distribution you can think of it as so in unlike the previous we had 1d you can think of this l matrix as a 2d distribution and all i want to do is i want to pick one uh, one uh, vector from this or one point from this matrix one point belongs to one of the vectors in this code book 
and how do you draw that sample basically a discrete sample you just use the gumball soft max trick that's simple as that right so maybe it sounds it all sounds complicated but when you think of it and when you we just understand it it's, it feels so simple right so that is the that's and how do you how do you draw the sample and you can draw the sample by using this probability equation right you know the logits you know because that that means you know all these values and you know this nv nv is basically gumball uh, gumball uh, uh, gumball uh, noise you, you know how to add that and tau you can just choose i mean it depends like if you choose 0.1 it will choose exactly one uh, uh, logit and if you use let's say uh, 0. Point or maybe 10 it will choose lot of uh, values a lot of i mean this probability become distribution but if you choose one it's just one value right so it's as simple as that right so i hope you guys understood this quantization model very interesting i mean it needs lot of this uh, knowledge about discrete latent variable model and this gumball trick and uh, some of these uh, ideas from quantizations and so on but once you understand it it feels very simple so that is all about the uh, training part sorry that's all about the model architecture part let's look at the training part uh, so the training uh, they're using uh, many trick techniques so the masking technique which we saw uh, which basically uh, people use it uh, these days uh, and then objective objective is basically the loss function we will see three different loss functions which they are using the contrastive loss function which we also already saw uh, diversity loss and l2 loss uh, basically i will tell you how, what they are and fine tuning basically fine tuning is once you train your model the pre trained network how are you going to use it for uh, downstream speech recognition task with very minimal amount of unlabeled data right so uh, let's see masking so masking is basically uh, you want to mask the uh, inputs to uh, uh, inputs to the uh, transformer or uh, contextual encoder which we are calling in this paper so as we saw so the feature extractor will give you some outputs right some sort of vectors which we called as z1 z2 and zt then we apply quantization uh, q and we get a sequence of other vectors which we call it as q1 q2 and so on q capital d now this has to goes to uh, this has to go to the transformer uh, but we can't directly feed them we have to mask some of these vectors and then feed them as input to the transformer right and the idea of transformer is to predict once uh, idea of idea of transformer is uh, given this masked input you have to predict the whole uh, actual ground truth uh, uh, ground truth q q ground truth uh, capital q right quantized uh, sequence of vectors so uh, how they are doing it is they simply randomly sample uh, uh, with replacement with probability all the time step and whichever uh, index they choose uh, they just uh, mask from that index they just mask the subsequent 10 frames right uh, and uh, once as a result so basically uh, they uh, they mask out almost 50 percent of all time steps uh, with mean span of uh, uh, mean span length of 14.7 and uh, which corresponds to around uh, 299 millisecond of worth of audio data right and uh, objective is basically they are using three different losses so the i think lm is the uh, contrastive loss we will see the mass loss and then ld is called diversity loss and lf is called uh, feature uh, loss which we which will see in the coming slides so what is contrastive loss so contrastive loss is basically very simple let's say you have uh, let's say you have uh, uh, output uh, uh, ct right so this is the context network output is ct so at time step t for example and this q uh, qt uh, basically is a uh, uh, basically let's say basically is the ground truth for example let's say right so the qt so you want to make this q ct as close as qt at the same time you also want to make this uh, this ct uh, pushed uh, ct which is not close to uh, let's say k diff k different distractors where they call it so this k distractors are nothing but uh, some cues which are not q qt so basically these are like randomly chosen uh, cues right say you have q equal to uh, q1 q2 qi and q capital t and this i am at t at the time step and i am getting output c uh, ct and I want to make these two very close, but at the same time, I want to make these ones much far. Like I just want to push them away, right? 
So how do you do that? So very simple. So you find some similarity metric, which could be simple L2 loss or some sort of cosine similarity. So CT between uh, CT and QT. And uh, uh, this K is basically, um, I, I think uh, K is the number of uh, 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 number of uh, distractors. And uh, uh, you just uh, maximize or minimize this loss function as simple as that, right? So you want to make CT and QT much, uh, CT and QT uh, closer. At the same time, you want to make all other Qs uh, from C much far away. So you just want to push them away. So as simple as that, right? So this is this is the loss function, contrastive loss function. A very standard loss function. If you just, uh, I mean, if you, if you want to learn more about it, just Google search. It's very, it's very simple, right? And uh, there is one more loss called diversity loss and penalty loss. Uh, so the diversity loss is basically uh, tells you uh, to use uh, all the entries of V uh, from all the code books. Uh, and you can do that by maximizing the entropy of the uh, softmax distribution L. So the L is distribution which we saw previously, which is basically of dimension G cross V, a 2D distribution. Uh, so you just find the entropy of this uh, 2D distribution and you just maximize the entropy averaged over all the uh, all the uh, utterances, batch of utterances, right? So uh, at the same time, uh, while, while computing this, while computing this uh, uh, entropy, you don't include this uh, gumbel noise and this temperature. So basically assume they are shut off uh, and you have just this distribution, which is this I L L distribution and you just compute this uh, diversity loss using the entropy equations. And then that's where uh, that's all. So this, this, that's a diversity loss and penalty loss is as simple, like just compute the, uh, uh, the, the L2 loss as simple as that. So coming to fine tuning, so what they do is they, they I mean, once you train the model, like pre-train the self-supervised uh, wave to wake model, uh, just add some of the layers on top of each other and just initialize them randomly. And uh, let's say if you are predicting, uh, uh, predicting like, uh, uh, let's say characters or graphemes, uh, you just have to put C different uh, classes. And let's say if you are using, uh, I mean, C is basically the vocabulary size. It could be characters or it could be subwords or it could be phonemes, anything, it's up to you. And if you are using CTC loss, you just add the loss and train, train the whole network. Not train the whole network, just train the top few, whatever re initialized in it. I mean, the in, uh, randomly initialized projection layers you initialized. Uh, for example, in case of LibriSpeech, they are using 29 characters, which are basically the output tokens and they use CTC loss, as simple as that. Uh, coming to the experiments, uh, we will see the data set, what is the uh, idea of what is the experiment for pre-training, what is the experiment fine tuning and finally we will see some language models and decoding tricks. So uh, so in that case of data sets, they are using two data sets, the LibriSpeech which is about 960 hours of audio data and LibriVox which is about 60,000 hours of audio data but after processing they get around 53,000 hours of uh, audio data. and. Uh, uh, for fine tuning, they used six different data sets. I mean, one is the actual 960 hours of full label data set. Train clean 100, which is basically 100 hours of audio data. Train, 100, train 10 hours is a 10 hours of audio data. Train one hour and train 10 minutes. So these are like one hour and 10 minutes uh, uh, label data set. So we will see the performance of using this uh, amount of training data. Uh, and uh, we'll see what is the accuracy on the test, dev clean and dev other. Uh, test uh, data set. So, uh, and another task is uh, phoneme recognition task on Timit and they get state of the art results on Timit uh, phoneme recognition, which we'll, saw, which we'll see in the coming slide. And uh, I mean, Timit, as you know, standard, it has five hours of audio recordings and uh, you just want to predict the phonemes and 39 phonemes, for example. So for pre-training, they are using two models. One is called base model and another is called large model. So the base model basically uses uh, seven uh, convolution blocks, temporal convolution block, uh, each having 512 uh, uh, channels. And um, these are the kernel strides and kernel widths. And for uh, transformer, I mean contextual encoder, they are using uh, 12 transformer blocks, uh, basically self-attention blocks uh, and uh, model dimension 768 inner dimension, which is the fully, fully, fully feed forward is 3000 and they use eight attention heads, right? And um, batch size is, uh, since they are using, like they have an enormous amount of GPUs, they use very big batch size 
they say they have around 64 v 100 gpus uh, untrained for 1.6 days it's very yeah so and they have another large model basically it's again a pre-training model a wave to wake model with the tra 24 transformer blocks with 16 attention heads and uh, the batch size is much more and uh, amount of gpus again doubled like 128 v100 gpus and they train it for two days about two days and for librivox they train it for five days and uh, um, and uh, dropout uh, they use dropout of 0 0.1 in transformer and uh, uh, and uh, I mean uh, that that's the idea of this uh, experiment I mean they have a few other parameters as well like what is the learning rate what is the op optimization and so on but if you want to see them you can just go and read the uh, that experiment section like if you are planning to implement this on your own for example right and uh, for fine tuning uh, what they do is once they pre-train the architectures the basically the base or the, the large transformer architecture once they train it on huge amount of uh, data and large i mean crazy uh, big uh, gpu cloud servers and uh, they have they 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 can fine tune that pre-trained model on very small amount of labeled data uh, just add some sort of uh, linear layers on top of or some random la random initialized layers on top of the transformer and they just you can just predict the labels so the labels could be graphemes or maybe the characters or it could be subwords or it could be phonemes right and uh, some learning rates and so on but you can read the paper i'll just skip them uh, for language model they use uh, two different language models so basically the classical n-gram language model in this case four gram and a transformer language model uh, and the transformer language model uh, parameters are optimized using bayesian optimization technique maybe maybe people may be knowing about it so bayesian optimization is basically some sort of a searching algorithm basically it's some sort of a, like a, not exactly not like a grid search or even gradient descent it's a very clever way of uh, optimizing um, a function and in this case finding the parameters basically so let's go to the results uh, we are running out of time um, so in the results section you can just see uh, if you have 10 minute label data one hour label data 10 hour and 100 hours of label data as you can see uh, uh, even with just just 10 minutes of label data and if you use the large uh, large uh, transformer which basically uses the librivox uh, uh, LibriVox uh, 50,000 hours of data you will get uh, around 5.7 percent of uh, WER which is great I mean just 10 minutes of imagine just you have just 10 minutes of labeled data and you can do s you can get such a low uh, word error rate uh, I mean this is like a golden opportunity for people who wants to do build companies out of speech recognition right like if they want to build speech recognition for some of the local languages they don't need to go and collect thousands and thousands of hearts of data they just you just scrape from online like for uh, for um, unlabeled data and train this huge enormous models and then fine tune it on very small maybe 10 minutes of uh, labeled data which one person can simply sit and do right so this is this is the beauty of uh, deep learning and self-supervised uh, algorithms people are developing these days it's crazy it's very good um, and uh, uh, yeah and uh, as I said uh, one hours of label data 10 hour label, label data as you can see it's like you're getting very very low uh, word error rates right and uh, uh, for 100 hours they also have uh, some of the comparison from the previous models so basically this noisy student is one of the paper from Google recently released uh, with uh, co-authors like Quackley and so on um, and uh, they show uh, they get around 4.2 percent but this paper is just uh, doubling or reducing it by 2.1 uh, uh, percent reduction absolute improvement absolute uh, reduction in uh, in the uh, in the WR and uh, uh, when they use uh, all label data uh, this is basically comparison with the previous uh, algorithms and the recent one as I said context net and then using uh, noisy student trainings and so on uh, this paper is basically working best but in one scenario here if you see uh, noisy student is uh, basically a little bit better compared to um, this approach um, the current approach little bit I mean just 0 0.1 percent uh, uh, and it's happening on the uh, the test data which is like clean and others uh, but I, I, I don't I don't know it's like it's almost same so it doesn't matter 
so finally uh, the timid phoneme recognition task they are getting the best uh, per phoneme error rate um, compared to the previous methods like the wqae wave to wake and other previous methods uh, and uh, that's all for this tutorial thank you so much for watching this tutorial and i, I know this tutorial became a little bit bigger because the content was heavy and um, it was uh, very quite uh, impressive work from uh, facebook ai and uh, thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you like this tutorial uh, please give a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed to my channel subscribe uh, for some more uh, video content thank you